the end of the world. We are in the end times. Armageddon and the great tribulation is here. The Antichrist is among us. The mark of the beast is starting to begin. I don't think there's ever been such a widespread interest in the end times like there is today. Let's proceed. Around the world, people are wondering if the end of the world is around the corner. And who could blame them for wondering when you see what is happening in our world today in 2021? The end time signs are more prevalent today than any time in history. Wars, famine, natural disasters, earthquakes, incredible and rapid increase in knowledge, poisoning of the air and water, birds of the air and fish of the sea dying in huge numbers, the drastic increase in acceptance of violence and sexual immorality, false Christs and prophets popping up everywhere, Christians being killed for their faith. These are just a few of the biblical end time signs we can clearly see happening right now. 2 Timothy 3 verses 1 through 5 tell us, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. There is no doubt whatsoever that we live in perilous times. People have become lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, children disobedient to their parents. And don't let me get started on unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, despisers of those that are good, and truly lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, all while having a form of godliness. These signs of the end times are directly pointing to our generation. Anyone can see the great moral degeneration that has happened over the past 50 plus years. The moral deprivation of this world has reached such a point that we are now like Sodom and Gomorrah, just before God destroyed that city with fire. It also tells us in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 3-4, through 4, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fall asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Do we live in a day of scoffers? Most certainly. The very definition of scoffer is... A person who mocks or makes fun of someone or something, often of religion or moral values. The majority of people, including many Christians, do and continue on with their regular lives without any real thought or urgency to get right with God. Remember Jesus told us in Matthew chapter 24, 37, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. In Luke chapter 17, verses 28 through 30, Jesus says, Likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they did drink, they bought, they sold, they planned, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus it shall be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. What was it like in Noah's day and in Lot's day? Well, in Genesis chapter 16, 13, it tells us that Noah's day, the earth was filled with violence. And in Jude chapter 1, verse 7, it says that in Lot's days, Sodom and Gomorrah had given itself over to fornication and strange flesh. So violence prevailed in Noah's days and various sexual immoralities prevailed in Lot's day. How much more rampant is violence and sexual immoralities today? Though these end time signs are so prevalent in our world today, does not mean the world is coming to an end in the next few years. No one can set dates. It's like I've been telling people for years. Fulfillment of the signs of biblical prophecy is like looking at two mountains next to each other from a distance. They look as if they're touching one another. However, as you get closer, you find out the two mountains are actually miles apart. Though we may see prophecy coming into focus, 
One event to the other could be years, even decades apart. Nevertheless, we do know that the signs given in biblical prophecy are specifically pointing to our day today. And there can be no doubt we are living in those last days. Never before in history could we look into the inspired writings of the biblical prophets and apostles and find many of the world's conditions lining up with the prophecies of the end time like they are today. And people have become fascinated with the predictions of the end of the world. Most of the popular Christian videos on YouTube are about the end time prophecies, the mark of the beast, Armageddon, and the Great Tribulation. Many churches, pastors, and preachers fill their sermons about end time prophecies, the Great Tribulation, and the Mark of the Beast. I know. It seems as if the subject of the end time prophecies has supplanted our desire for learning what it means to grow spiritually in our Lord Jesus Christ. So I have a question. Is our overexposure, obsession, and concern about the end time prophecies healthy for our Christian growth? That's a good question. Well, Jesus told us in Matthew 24, 6, See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. In Mark 13, 7, he says, Do not be alarmed. These things must happen, but the end is still to come. The Greek word used for both troubled and alarmed is thraeo, which means unsettled, disturbed, agitated, thrown into confusion. Now, the opposite of troubled or alarmed is cool, calm, and collective unworried, comforted, composed, peaceful, settled, untroubled, undisturbed, unfazed, unmoved, self-controlled, level-headed, assured, and dismayed. Do you see where Jesus is going with this? I do. Jesus is basically telling us that we are not to let what we see of the end times coming cause us to be unsettled, disturbed, or thrown into confusion as we continue to follow him. Absolutely. Luke chapter 21 is a whole chapter dedicated to Jesus speaking of the signs of the end times. And he tells us in Luke 21, 34, Take heed to yourself, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. Now the word overcharge is baruno, which means to burden, to weigh down. And he says with surfeiting. Your Bible may use the terms dissipation or carousing. But what this word surfeiting means is to feed or supply yourselves an excessive or a moderate amount of something. Notice that Jesus says your hearts, cardia, which literally translates your mind, your inner self, your soul, if you will. This is what becomes burdened and weighed down with this excessive and immoderate concerns of this life, your heart. So what we see is Jesus cautioning us against supplying ourselves with excessive or immoderate trouble or alarm of the things of this life, this world, which only brings unsettled, disturbed, agitated, thrown into confusion feelings and thoughts, which does nothing but weigh us down and burden us. And concerns and worries of the end of the world fall squarely in this category. Anything you continue to feed yourself begins forming and shaping your thoughts and opinions. In Luke chapter 21, verse 36, it says, Be always on watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. The meaning of the word watch is to carefully observe someone or something over a period of time, a close observation. And in this case, Jesus tells us the purpose of our watchfulness is that we may pray. Pray to escape all that is about to happen, or the word gunamai, meaning transition from one point to another, or what is to come to pass. So Jesus gives us signs of the end times as warnings that are intended to motivate us to turn unto God, to stand before him without having anxiety or concern for this life. However, when our focus becomes more on the sensationalism or intellectual exercise of the end times, we can and do easily overcharge our hearts and minds, feeding and supplying it excessive or immoderate amount of fears, anxieties, concerns, and worries of what is coming. And this is nothing but cares of this world. Now the Apostle Peter who was front and center when Jesus spoke about not being troubled or alarmed about signs of the end times, goes on through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to tell us that prophecy should serve to strengthen our hope and faith 
and not that of clouding our judgment and perception. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 7-8 through 8. The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be of sound judgment and sober of spirit for the purposes of prayer. Above all, keep fervent in your love for one another. Peter's admonition and instruction of the signs of the end times is a call to all believers to be of sound judgment, be of sober spirit for the purposes of prayer individually and collectively, and for us to know that we are to fervently love one another. But instead, many are drawn more to the sensationalism of the end times, the mark of the beast, mystery Babylon, pre-post-mid-millennialism, pre-trib, post-trib, mid-trib, etc., than giving heed to its warning to keep fervent in our love for one another, to continually make amends with the Lord, to continue practice of our growing in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to stay prayerful about all things. As Christians, we are not to be hyper-focused on the end-time prophecies, nor are we to ignore the end-time prophecies, as Jesus talked a lot about his second coming and the signs of the end times. However, Jesus stresses the end times for a clear purpose, to make us ready, because he wants his disciples to live life with a pressing sense of urgency of being right with God and growing continually in the spirit. Being hyper-focused on the end times is not good and it is unhealthy, especially to our own spiritual growth. It causes us to lose sight of our primary purpose, which is to grow in Christ and love one another. His revealing signs of the end time is not meant for us to put into our daily lives, trying to search, find how it fits into our spiritual development and personal relationship with Him and the Father. These signs given are meant to stress our accountability to God, the urgency with which we must live passionately for Jesus, being great stewards of our gifts, talents, and resources God has given us for his cause, trusting God's sovereignty over all. So I will conclude this by saying, be of sound mind and judgment. Don't be overtaken by sensationalism of end time prophecies, but continue in your growth in your personal relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is far greater than finding out about the preordained things that are going to come upon this world. Hallelujah and amen. That's word. May God bless and keep you, our friends. In Jesus' holy and precious name, amen. Thank you for tuning in to Fellowship in the Word. If you've been blessed by this video, please click the subscribe button and the bell to receive notification of when we upload new videos. Thank you and God bless you.